This is Abnormal Entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Prime Cutler, a very cavalier recap about the show's biggest star, Jay Cutler. This is Kevin Moyers, and I am on Season 1, Episode 2 here. Fascinating news right out of the gate. Jay Cutler gets a haircut. This is what retirement looks like for a very rich NFL player. May I call him wealthy? He is a multimillionaire. He and his wife combined have millions and millions, so why not? So we start out. He has his haircut. Kristen is all kinds of enthused <laughs> as she's on her way to uh, a workout, a boot camp, and he makes fun of her a little bit for calling it boot camp. But I have to say, the relationship between these two is kind of fun. It's They bust each other's balls a little bit, and... Uh, I like that. It's it's entertaining because when they're doing it, they're trying not to laugh at each other a little bit, but they do crack smiles when they when they bust on each other, and it's fun. And there are times when Kristen's like, uh, I'm a little aggravated with Jay because of this or that, but whatever it is, he can make her laugh, always gets a smile out of her, even when she's a little bit irritated. So that's good, but she does the same to him. She busts on him, and he gets like, little squinty eye and he looks at her is like all right you want to play we're gonna play and it's fun it's fun to watch the two of them together as a couple i bet they'd be kind of fun to hang out with which we get to do uh, a little bit in the later part of this episode but jay presents that he wants to buy a house and kristen's like what we just got this place all set up he's like no i think we need to buy a house she's like for you and he said no for you know you and the kids as well and she's not having it. And one <laughs> one of the great parts, like, he goes, 50-50? She's like, no, come on, 50-50? Nope. <laughs> and she walks out, and he sits there and just mumbles to himself, I lost that battle. <laughs> I didn't even catch it on the first viewing. I watch all of these twice, once to watch and once for notes. So that that's my process here. But it's entertaining. It's worth watching twice to me because I crack up so hard at this silly shit. So, uh... You know, Kristen tells Kelly about the move, uh, and Kelly's just still obsessed with the Canadian dude. He said he's not going to make it down here this weekend. Like, who are these jet-setting motherfuckers that just bounce around from country to country, like, on a whim? Eh, you know what I feel like doing this weekend? I'm going to leave uh, Toronto and go to Nashville. Just, you know, because that's not a $600 fucking plane ticket, right? Ugh. All right. Especially last minute. It drives me crazy. But, anyway... So at the store, uh, I, I have to make a major correction. <laughs> For the entire first episode of this podcast, I talked about Rachel, the store manager. I have no idea who Rachel is because the store manager's name is Brittany. <laughs> and it's spelled in an obnoxious way. Brittany, which nobody does. Nobody, There's no I in Brittany. Well, there's one eye in Brittany. There are not two eyes in Brittany. Can I say that? All right. Fucked up her name the entire first episode. This is, I'm watching the second episode for the second time. It took three and a half viewings for me to learn her name, which shows you how much I give a shit about these side characters. They're all awful people. So she's at the store. She's still battling with Shannon about stuff. Shannon, of course, the social media manager, the redheaded devil. Uh, she's horrible. And she's just being an asshole back to Brittany for the whole time. And uh, it's it's insane. Like, she can't get through to Shannon. Shannon's being more and more of an asshole as time goes on, and it gets worse. So Brittany can't deal with this. She meets uh, her boyfriend, Roddy Vetter, uh, over at some place. And he, he, she's joking about fighting Shannon, and he's like, don't do that. I know you got in fights when you are younger. You know, She's like, I haven't been in a fight since I was 22. And he's like, what? That's too old. That's crazy. Now, first of all, he's right. Second, I'm looking at Brittany. There's no way she got into 
a fight at 22. She might have gotten punched in the face at 22 and crumbled to the ground crying. She is spineless. There is no way this girl is swinging back. Zero percent of this was a fight. She got her ass kicked at 22. That's what happened. And it was a one and done. So, you know, <laughs> there's there's no way. I don't believe it at all. But anyhow, this is going on. Uh, it, it's all chaos there. Back at home, Jay is sitting at the kitchen counter, and he's watching the deer feed of somebody else <laughs> online. Don't know how, don't know why, but he's sitting there on his tablet. He's like, oh, check this out. Oh, look, this is, this is a wide deer. <laughs> and he's talking about this deer that he loves. You have to watch this. Talking about this deer he loves seeing because it's not Dale again. He's naming the deer on somebody's deer cam somewhere else. It's a complete and total stranger's backyard. And he's watching their deer cam, their deer feeder cam. I, I just don't know what possesses a person. Although, here I am talking about basically somebody else's deer feeder cam. So there we go. I guess it's reality TV that Jay likes to watch. I like to watch Jay. Jay likes to watch deer. That's the way it goes. <laughs> All right, then. I just, uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so a little bit later, um, as as Kristen is planning to move her business, she walks over, looks over his balcony, which goes down into, uh, it looks like, you know how you see a stairwell in a hotel in a movie and you look way down to the bottom? We'll widen that to a big square, and that's what it looks like she's looking down into, and there's a library. They have this huge library full of books. Jay's sitting on this leather couch reading a book. And so she comes down there. She's like, what are you doing? She comes down there and asks if he would help uh, move boxes for the office tomorrow. And he messes around with her about it. You know, like, uh, I'm not your employee, you know. I, I got an appointment at 2.30 to pick up the boys. And so, it, it, again, it shows a little bit more of their playful relationship because they are kind of having fun with each other in this moment. Uh, and he's just messing with her, but, of course, he's like, yeah, I'll help you out, you know. He, as much as he uh, complains, he's like, I'm done with you. Get out of here. <laughs> um, which, by the way, when it happens... He's the only one there at the house. And he's asking Kristen, like, shouldn't your employees be here? Wouldn't this be faster? Wouldn't this be a little bit quicker if we had some help? She's like, no, no, they're at the office setting up so we can unpack. And he's like, yeah, yeah, and it's a bunch of shit, by the way. It's an entire truckload of shit he has to move. But he does it. Again, playfully messing around, but he does it. And uh, he's just calling out Kristen's employees because she's calling them. They're not answering the phone. She wants them to set up some labels on some bins, right? third person she calls finally answers and he's like oh one out of three <laughs> not looking good <laughs> but that happens they head over there now meanwhile at the office again Brittany and shannon going at it shannon starts setting up there's this big uh common usage desk it's a long table but meant like a desk you know the width of a desk and, and enough room for a few chairs Shannon starts setting up some old desk office shit that she had at some secretary job. She's pulling out, like, pictures of her family, a globe, shit like that. Brittany's like, what are you doing? And Shannon gets all pissed off. I thought people would like this. And just starts chucking shit back into the bin, shattering everything. And her friend uh, that I called Spoon last time, stirring the shit, is actually the voice of reason. Her name's Taylor. I wrote it down this time. But she's actually kind of the voice of reason to make Shannon see that she's been acting like an asshole. So uh, Jay and Kristen pull up. You have all the ladies there. You have this big, doofy guy named Worth. They keep, like, the women, there's, like, a buckets of drool pouring out of these women for this guy. He's a big, buff, dopey. Like, he has that vacant look in his face. Like, kind of a smile all the time. Like he's a marionette. <laughs> he's just moving around. Uh, he has a man bun. Uh, you know, he, he's like a, like a white Jason Momoa. That's what he is. <laughs> the whitest possible version of Jason Momoa you could get. And uh, it's just like he's hired to be the muscle. His name is Worth. Okay? 
Listen to how clever his parents were to come up with that one. Because the guy is worth a lot of money. His parents are rich. The guy's never really done anything in his life. And now he's going to be a stock boy for Kristen Cavallari. I don't understand the purpose of it other than maybe he wants to get on television. But again, the drooling over this guy is obscene. But hilarious because it plays a part later. (laughs) So... Jay shows up with a truckload of shit. He's like, come on, let's go get this out of my truck. He is not fucking with these women. And then Worth is there just uh, uh, grabbing boxes. And nobody's done the labels. Not one person. And Kristen's like, what the fuck? I asked you to do one job. You couldn't get some paper? Put some labels? And Jay's just like, what's going on here? (laughs) Can I just fire them all? And he says it while the women are standing there. Which I love. He does not care he doesn't care it's awesome so that all happens uh shannon and Brittany are a mess kristen's pissed at everybody and so they move on so we get to the nighttime here's uh jay and kristen they're out with uh kelly her best friend and then chewy who's one of jay's best friends uh chewy is 40 year old guy who just came out of the closet and he's just starting to uh explore like gay bars and stuff like that and jay asked him any any gay bars making any love connections like he's just openly starting to do this and he's telling him i'm going to some bars and stuff like that and he's like okay okay and uh you know supporting him like asking him how he's doing and stuff <laughs> and he goes to Kristen, and he goes, she comes back what's going on he goes think uh chewy's got some hookups going <laughs> he's like no <laughs> being all shy about it because he's still not that open but they're like come on talk talk about it it's kind of funny you know but it's as much of an asshole as people have portrayed cutler to be when he was a player he's here supporting his friend like wanting him to be open about it talking about it asking him about how he's doing how things are going with that so you, you see different things from a guy who had this kind of douchebag sort of reputation in the NFL. It's interesting to see this side of him. Um, Now we get to the uh, other crew, the other staff of the store, all of them, including the cameraman. Uh, One of them's name is, uh, I don't know, I forgot already. I watched it. <laughs> Again, Cleve, that's his name. Somebody's name is Cleve. I think he's the photographer. And then this other dude. Uh, and so they all go, and they're all drinking, like, mimosas and shit like that. And uh, Shannon has his boyfriend. His name is Gurney. Now, Gurney works with uh, Fake Eddie Vedder and, and uh, making music and stuff like that. Gurney is... <sighs> Gurney looks like he's there to be taken advantage of. He just has that innocent, doe-eyed look to him. And on one hand, I feel bad for him. And on the other hand, I want to smack him and tell him to wake the fuck up. So, and and th- there's a guy there to do that, by the way. So Shannon is sitting next to uh, Worth, who shows up to this, you know, all-night drinking binge or whatever, this hangout, and she is blatantly, openly flirting with him takes his hand she's touching him she's doing all the things if you're a guy out on a date with a woman and she's doing all this stuff you know where this is leading you one of you is going home with the other that's everything she's doing and it's so blatant that uh taylor's boyfriend is there as well looking at gurney gurney's looking at him and taylor's like that's pretty blatant you know (laughs) he's like uh that's kind of close that's fucked up so You know, they see it. It's so obvious. It's ridiculous. And she's like, hey, hey, little, making little eyes at him and laughing his jokes and stuff. And Gurney's pissed off. And she's like, what? What? I don't get it. He's like, talk about it later. He said, what? What? And then she's calling him out. Uh, Gurney doesn't want to talk about whatever's bothering him right now, everybody. Just, she is the biggest asshole I've seen on television in a long time. She's a horrible horrible person and while i feel bad for this guy i want him to just go away from her stay away from her and even taylor's boyfriend is like hey you're being an ass and you're pretty blatantly flirting with worth 
and her in her, you know the little interviews they do on reality shows she's like if i wanted to be with worth you'd know i'd want to be with worth which she does she does <laughs> and uh and she's asking him about his girlfriend and stuff oh what's that you're a really good guy you're a really good guy which <laughs> again it goes right along those lines you know that's being said in that way you know she's interested and and that's that i'm listen i'm old enough and experienced enough seen enough where these are just common things uh and it's so sickeningly blatant gurney says fuck it he walks home he leaves the bar he walks away and then uh shannon's starting to panic all of a sudden once she's kind of busted on the fact that she was blatantly flirting calls who comes to save the day saves the day Brittany, because you know their boyfriends are working together so shannon's calling her is he over there that kind of thing it's just a mess of a shit show, but uh, the saving grace <laughs> of the show, of course, is our star, Jay Cutler. And there's a moment, it's just kind of in the middle randomly, <laughs> where he's sitting in the kitchen. <laughs> this is a big kitchen island they sit at. And uh, you know, he's watching his tablet or whatever he's doing. And Kristen's like asking him about his fish tank. <laughs> and it's such a nothing thing, but it's the best. And she's like, what's with your fish tank over here? How's this fish tank doing? And he's like, those fish are thriving. <laughs> she's like, these are the ugliest fish I've ever seen. <laughs> and he's explaining how this is like the third wave of fish because <laughs> the, uh, the originals all died off in like weeks. <laughs> and he's just replaced them. And now I, he's got it. And it's the shittiest little, like I bought it at, at a flea market looking fish tank. Like he bought the five gallon fish tank kit. You buy for a kid, and that's what Jay did, and those are his fish. And it's the greatest thing in the world to me. And it, it because in my kitchen, I had this two-gallon fish tank that I bought for my daughter because she, she wanted snails, and the snails died so many times we couldn't get them to live. And finally, we got these fish tank at a, at a damn carnival <laughs> that have now lived for two and a half years, these three goldfish. And... <laughs> they were in this little two gallon tank they were little and i finally said I, I can't leave them in there anymore they need space so i went from a two gallon to a 10 gallon tank for carnival goldfish i went and bought them a larger tank a bubbler new fill for for goddamn carnival goldfish they were in a cooler you throw in ping pong balls in the in the things that's what we did and then he this dude scooped three fish with his bare hand out of a cooler that had like three inches of water in it and threw them in a plastic bag, was scooped up some of the water with a cup, with a solo cup, put it in there, and those things have been alive for two and a half years, and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get them as big as the one in that kid's book where he feeds the goldfish too much. That's my goal. That's what I'm trying to do, bigger than this house with those goldfish. So I I feel Jay right there with his fish tank, his shitty fish tank, because I have my shitty fish tank. And... There you are. So uh, in, enjoy episode two of of uh, Very Cavalry. It was a blast. Now, if you want to support us, keep the show going. Uh, head to abnormalentertainment.com. Subscribe to all of the shows over there. We're on Spotify, Stitcher. Uh, these all go up on YouTube if you want to just sit with that plan. All that stuff. So uh, do that and... I, I would like for you to head over to bunny17media.com. If you like what I'm doing here, uh, I have some books over there that are published. Use the promo code CUTLER. Save 15% on everything you buy over there. Okay? That's, it doesn't matter if you buy an ebook, audiobook, paperback, comic book, hardcover. All of it is 15% off, no matter how little or how much you buy, if you use the code CUTLER. Okay? Like Jay Cutler, just Cutler. And you'll get that discount. But thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to episode three. And I'll have a new episode up the day after that airs. So you guys can catch up and kind of laugh along with me about it. So until the next episode, my name's Kevin Moyers. And we'll see you with a new recap of Barry Cavallari right here on Prime Cutler. Listen to more of Prime Cutler and subscribe at abnormalentertainment.com. Find 
all Abnormal Entertainment shows at AbnormalEntertainment.com, Stitcher Smart Radio, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and anywhere you listen to podcasts. Find me at Kevin Moyers on Twitter and on Facebook. Find Abnormal Entertainment at Abnormal Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You've been listening to the Abnormal Entertainment Network.